What is going on guys, it's Modern Dwarf here and welcome back to another ApparitionNet Studio update video. So we've made a pretty significant update to ApparitionNet Studio 1.1.7 is the update version we're now on. So the changes that have been added, uh, there's quite a lot of changes that have been added to the console tools. So I'm going to be going over that first and then I'll move on to a new feature that we've added into the Call of Duty tools, which I think a lot of people will really uh, like. So yeah, we've added a pretty cool feature to the Call of Duty tools and quite a bunch of different features to the console tools to just make it easier to use and just generally more functional. So I want to go ahead and show you guys that first. So the first thing we have is the file manager. So I'll go ahead and open the file manager and load the directories. So first thing we have in here is change view, which allows you to change the way the files and folders are displayed. So I can change them to small icons. I can change them to a list view which is really useful for finding, you know, default.xex files and amongst all the game files uh, when you have it in this view. And then, of course, you can change it to tile as well and back to normal again. So that's just one little thing that we threw in there. So the other thing we've added is the ability to double click your key vault to get uh, your key vault's information. So it will tell you if the key vault is banned or not. It will give you the serial number of the KV, console ID of the KV, manufacture date, the region, OSIG and DVD key of the DVD drive that's tied to that key vault. So you can get all that information just by double clicking the KV. Uh, you don't actually have to import because before you had to import the KV in order for it to tell you if it's banned or not. And there was no way to really check once it was already imported. So now you can just double click the key vault and it will give you all that information. So that's one useful little thing that's been added. The other awesome thing that's been added is the ability to just double click a file and it will open in your default program on your computer. So you can go ahead and change something and then just file save, close it, and it will apply that. And that's now added into the into your console's hard drive, essentially. So if I want to change like the launch.ini or say the CPU key.bin, then that will open in hex editor, hxd. Um, then also, for example, with the launch.ini, I can double click this. And if I say yes, then I'm opening it up in the dash launch configurator, which you can go ahead and just change all the settings, edit your plugins from in here. Um, or if you want to just open in notepad, you just have to say no to this uh, message and it will just open in your default um, text editor on your computer. So that's a couple of things that have been added that just really make it more user friendly. The other thing, uh, which is kind of a big deal, um, it's pretty, <laughs> It's pretty. It's a pretty simple thing that's been added, but it just makes things a lot easier to use and uh, makes the file manager a lot, uh, a lot more functional. It's just the ability to now drag and drop files, so something we didn't have before. So, for example, um, I can see if I delete this gRPC two that's in here, and then just go ahead and take say gRPC two in this test file. If I want to copy that, copy that into the hard drive. Normally I'd have to import file, but instead all I do now is I can just drag and drop that straight into the file manager and it will go ahead and replace that. I'll go ahead and add those files in so you can see gRPC2 has been added and that test file has been added and I can delete them off my computer and I can. it also works both ways. So if I want to select these two files and I can drag and drop them back to my desktop and now they're on my desktop. So it just makes the file manager a lot easier to use and a lot quicker to use as well. So that's the changes that have been made to the file manager. Don't worry about the FTP manager option. That's shouldn't really be there. Um, so that won't work at the moment, but that will be added in 1.1.8. So anyway, that's the changes we've made to the file manager. So the next thing we have is the key vault checker, which also has the same drag and drop features. So if I take these two KVs, I can drag and drop them into the key vault checker and it will check to see if they're banned. As you can see, this KV is banned, this one is not. I can double click the KV as well, and that will also give me that same information it was giving me on the file manager. So a serial number, console ID, manufacture date, region, OSIG, and DVD key. And then the same with this one. You can see it's a different KV, different manufacture date. So anyway, that is the key vault checker, so made that a little bit more functional. And of course, the other change we've made is to the module debugger. So load module list, and that of course loads all the XCXs that are currently running on your console. You can click the advanced view. So this is the thing we've added that's new is this advanced view. And 
if you click it, you can see it gives you a different view of all the XEXs that are running. It also tells you the base address and the module size. This isn't really relevant for everyone, everyone which is why we kept the basic view in here as well. Um, because this view is absolutely fine if you just use the module debugger to um, inject plugins that you didn't have enough room for on Dash Launch and Dash Launch's plugin list, um, or you forgot to add a plugin in Dash Launch and you just want to inject it from um, from the console or from the computer, then you can do that. And of course, you can double click to dump it, and it does tell you the base address and the module size. But for developers, um, they wanted the uh, module, uh, the base address and the module size with the XEX files. So just so it's easier, they can copy and paste it, especially if they're making their own plugins or their own XEX file plugin of some kind. And they might, they probably want to know what the base address of other plugins are. So they know that to make theirs so that it doesn't conflict with other XEX files that are running. So f this is mainly for them. So for developers who are wanting to make their own plugins and inject them. This will hopefully help them, uh, whereas for everyone else, the basic view is perfectly fine. So that is what we've added. Oh, and you can also drag and drop as well. So you can drag and drop a plugin. I kind of don't want to do this because uh, it might screw up the console. And so okay, well, whatever. Let's let's just go for it. So JRPC2 is not running. If I drag and drop this in, uh, then it is now running. There you go. And I can unload it as well and JRPC2 is now removed. So again, you can do all of that stuff now. Drag and drop just makes all the console tools much easier uh, to use. And then of course, in the console manager, there's also a troubleshoot connection option. And that will basically, if you're having any problems, not being able to open tools, um, or the console's not connecting in the console manager, then you can right click, select the connection troubleshooter, run the test, and it will tell you what plugins are not working and give you suggestions on what you can do to fix it essentially. Um, so just gives you a general idea of what might be wrong. So that is, oh and the other thing of course that it does now is it also checks to see if your CPU key matches. So it checks the CPU key on the console and it checks to make sure it matches the one on the account. Um, so that will also let you know if the CPU key is causing your problem. All right, so that is all the changes that have been made to the console tools. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys is the changes that we've added into the Call of Duty tools. So I'm going to go ahead and load up Black Ops 2 here and show you guys that. Okay guys, so here we are. I'm in an online game here and in, on an online match. So kind of, it's going to be difficult to show you this mainly because I know people are going to leave the game as soon as they've realized what the hell is going on right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fetch all the clients in the game and I'm going to just select all clients and give everyone God mode so I can test this. We're probably going to leave though because I did that. But here's a here's a little test. So this new feature that's been added here here it is. So you write you double click on the gamer tag and you edit client gamer tag, and a new option has been added which is set gamer tag to IP city country. So I can click this and I can set anyone's gamer tag in the game as long as I'm host I can set their gamer tag to any one of these things so if I want to set my own I'm on a VPN right now obviously just to not show my actual IP address but if I select gamer tag to IP obviously there's a two second delay on the capture card so you can see my gamer tag has now changed to my IP address and then if I want to do uh, country then I can select gamer tag to country and it's giving me England. I'm not actually in England, but again, it's my VPN, so I'm not going to actually show my, my real information on here. Um, but if I want to say city, I can say city, and you can see my gamer tag up there. It's changed to London. I can double click, edit client gamer tag, change it to region. So that's going to be United Kingdom. You can see there United Kingdom. And then I can also change it to my ISP. Obviously, the gamer tag doesn't necessarily able to fit all of that in there. AS Hosting Services Incorporated. No idea. That's a VPN host of some kind. And then I can also change it to City Plus Region. So if I do that, you'll see it changes to London, England. So you can do that with anybody in the game. And you can even right click and select all clients. 
And then I can do this with every single person in the game and say, uh, let's see, gamer tag to, let's do city plus region. And boom, there you go. You can see some people are changing back. That's because they joined after I enabled God mode, but you can see their uh, information. I mean, if I just enable God mode again, that'll turn it on for everybody. And then make sure all clients is on. Edit client gamer tag. Let's set it to region. Or no, we'll do city plus region again. Johnstone, Iowa. Ipswich, England. London, England. So you've, you've got all of that. So you can see all that changing. And then if I want to go ahead and change them all to something else, let's change them all to region. And you'll see that's all changed. You've got United Kingdom, United Kingdom, Mexico, United States. Ooh, United States and Mexico. Ooh, okay. Maybe shouldn't have shown that. That's bad. The reason it's not changed mine is because when you do all clients, it will not change your gamer tag. So if you want to change everybody's name to their IP address and you use all clients, it will not change your, your uh, gamer tag to its IP. Um, it will only change the other people in the game unless you specifically select your own account, your own gamer tag to change. Um, so again, let's refresh. I'm not going to set it to their IP addresses because I don't want to show their IP addresses uh, in here. Let's set, let's change it to their ISPs. See what happens. Here we go. We've got Brazil Telecom, Virgin Media. That's a UK one. Uh, Mediacom, Virgin. Okay, we're back. So for some reason, my recording software just decided to stop uh, the recording at random. So that was great, perfect timing. But anyway, that was pretty much everything I wanted to show you guys anyway uh, in the tool that we, all the changes we've made in 1.1.7. Um, other than that, there's just a few little things like, um, for example, we've now got this little message at the bottom which lets you know where, where to go to get in contact with us if you're having any issues with the program. That's ApparitionNet Studio or ApparitionNet on AIM. And uh, you can click here to go to the forms as well. It'll take you to the help and support section on the forms. So that's basically everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So if you're looking to purchase ApparitionNet Studio, there's a link in the video description you can go to to purchase the software. Um, I'll also put the link to the website in the description and the playlist, which has all the videos I've made on ApparitionNet Studio so far. So if you're looking to check out more or check out some of the new features that it has, some of the other features, then check out that playlist. It has loads of videos on all that stuff. So anyway, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, comment if you have any questions, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video. Shuffle